Good morning. Welcome to the house of the Lord and to all who are at home. We welcome you into our, into our worship time. Before we get started, reminder that Dwell Orphan Care will be here making a presentation from 3 to 5 today. Also, it's the last day to donate to their Hope's Chest ministry. Um, on Wednesday is our Good and Plenty meal. So turkey dinner, it's takeout only, but come by and get your fill. And the women's prayer group is going to start up again on October 14th on Thursday mornings from 8.30 to 9.30 at Be uh, Betsy and Jim's Mother's Ball's house. And if you want more information about the women's prayer group, just call Betsy. And the last thing on, I want to share with you is on October 26th, the discipleship team will be sponsoring a next step event. It'll be here um, in the cafe at 6.30. And what the next step event is for is that if you've been worshiping with us for a while and you're considering maybe becoming a member, that would be a good time to come and talk with church leaders and myself about what is that next step. But maybe you have been, you've been a member of this church for a long time and you're just wondering, what is my next step in discipleship? What is my next step in, in maybe leadership? And if you're pondering those things, come on out and let's have a conversation. And for anyone who is at home, if you have been worshiping with us virtually for all this time and we haven't yet met you, we would love to meet you. Um, and we invite you to come to our next step event on October 26th. So think about that. Where is God leading you? What is your next step? My friends, let us begin worship in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.
All who are able, please rise for the choral call to worship. Come with joy. seated. Please join me in the prayer of the day. Gracious God, may your will reign in our lives. We thank you for all your good gifts. As we gather today, visit us with your presence. Increase our knowledge of you. Forgive us our sins. And may we always grow in your likeness and strength. Be your Alpha and Omega, and fill us with your peace. Amen. Please continue the prayers in the silence of your hearts. Our Heavenly Father, 
has granted us the special gift of his son, Jesus Christ. For on this day, the worldwide people are having communion together. We ask, dear Lord, that uh, you continue to watch over all of us, forgive our sins, as we know that you sent Jesus to earth to do that. And while he was here on earth, he taught his people to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. There are no children here today, so I'll ask the children of God, what can you give God thanks for today? We are entering in, we're getting closer to that day of Thanksgiving, that turkey dinner is going to remind us of that. So what can you be thankful for today? Anyone? The beauty of this time of year, amen. Amen. out of this year. We're moving forward with those plans and uh, rehearsals will begin on October 14th. So if you know somebody who wants to join us, please, please share that special musical event with them. All right. Yes. Other joys. Come on. Yes. Your good health. Amen. Amen. Amen to that. God is good to us, my friends. We, it is right for us to give our praise and thanks to him. So be mindful of that. Be mindful of that. We are still accepting the offerings in the boxes in the back of the church. But during this time, we should reflect on the ways that we can give back to God and to our church during this time.
Please join with me in the prayer of dedication. Gracious, Gracious God, God, I dedicate these gifts and my life to you as a living sacrifice and bring all my actions under the atoning blood of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, come and fill your temple. Amen. Today, as we gather for prayer, as we do every week, I hope that you will pray for one another, but I also, on this day, hope that in your minds, as your eyes are closed, that you will see people from other nations, other races, other languages, as we celebrate together on World Communion Sunday. And as you see this representation of those people, pray for them, for they are your brothers and sisters in Christ. They are one in the body one in the Spirit, and one in our Lord. And together, we, today, we celebrate that oneness. So as we prepare to go to the Lord in prayer, will you join me in our prayer Gracious God, we are thankful for this day and for those gathered here and around the world who, who sing your praises, come to hear your word, and to break bread with one another. Lord, today we pray for one another. We pray for our brother beside us. We pray for our sister on the other side. Lord, we pray for our family in front of us those that we know are behind us. Lord, we pray for their needs. We pray for their care. We pray for their health. Lord, we pray for their faith and we pray for their soul for we are all in need. Lord, we thank you for your church. We thank you for this fold of your church and for the people that you continue to bring. Lord, may we be faithful shepherds of, of those people, helping them to take the next step and helping them to grow in their faith. But Lord, we also, we pray for our brothers and sisters around the world. Lord, we don't know them. Many of them, we can't even pronounce their names. And yet, and yet you know their name. And, and that name is written on your heart. And so, Whatever their struggles are, we pray for them. Lord, it is a beautiful thing when we think about the world in you. And we can't wait for that day when there is no more division, no more separation. But Lord, we are, we are made one in Christ Jesus. Every one of us. Right now, though we are separated by miles, we come together to be made one through the bread and the cup. And we pray that you will bless us 
Hear our prayers, Lord, and may we be your light to the world. Amen. Please join with me in the prayer of illumination. O Lord, your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Give us grace to receive your truth in faith and love and strength to follow you have set before us. Amen. A reading from 1 Corinthians. Now, in the following instructions, I do not commend you. Because you come together, it is not for the better, but for the worse. For to begin with, when you come together as a church, I hear that there are divisions among you, and to some extent, I believe it. Indeed, there have to be factions among, among you, for only so will it come clear who among you are genuine. When you come together, it is not really to eat the Lord's Supper. For when the time comes to eat, each of you goes, home, goes ahead with your own supper, and one goes hungry, 
and another becomes drunk. But do you not have homes to eat and drink in? Or do you show contempt for the church of God and humiliate those who have nothing? What should I say to you? Should I commend you? In this matter, I do not commend you. For I received from the Lord what, I, what also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body. This is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Whoever, whosoever, therefore, eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be answered for, for the body and blood of the Lord. the Passover meal with his disciples in the upper room, they went to the Garden of Gethsemane. And while there, Jesus prayed. And he began by praying for himself. And then he prayed for his disciples. But then he went beyond the disciples. And Jesus said, I ask not only on behalf of these, my disciples, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word. Th those who will believe that, that's us. We have believed because of their faithfulness to share the word. And he says that, and he, he prays that they may be all one. As you, Father, are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may become completely one so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. When I was in seminary, I had my, my Old Testament professor was just a wealth of knowledge. You never got bored in his class. He always had something to teach you. And one of the things that made him so remarkable was that helped him to, to make class so interesting was that he lived in Israel for, for quite a few years. And he, he learned there and he taught there, but he also was on many archaeological digs and, and helped discover some of the great uh, artifacts and, and, and things from ancient Israel and the early Christian church. And he was telling us in class one day that one year while he was there, he went to the empty tomb during sunrise service. And as you can imagine, that place is visited quite extensively by people from all around the world who want to, to experience that. And he said while they were there, someone started singing, He Lives. And within moments, there was a chorus of a hundred people all singing this, this great hymn. But even though the people couldn't understand one another's languages, they all knew what was being spoken, whether it was in German or Hebrew or French or, or whatever. 
It reminds me of Revelation 7 where John saw the multitude of the redeemed before the throne of God and every nation, race, and tongue bowing before God, praising God in their, in their own tongue, but all is one. What, what my professor that day and everyone who was there that Easter morning experienced was a foretaste of what Jesus prayed for and calls us to, this oneness, this unity in Him. And for those people, for a few moments, they experience what God intends for humanity. One message, one hope, one flock, one shepherd, one God. And just for a few moments, they, they saw God's plan for us, that we would be united as one people. This message is at the heart of what we celebrate today on World Communion Sunday. The fact that even though we are many, even though we come from different places and we're of different races and we speak different languages and we even pray differently, we are still one body. We are one family. We are one in Christ. In theory, I think that's God trying to get a hold of me. <laughs> it wasn't God. I had it off. It was just vibrating. I think it may have been in response to our power outage. Anyhow, we are called to be one. And in theory, I think we understand that. However, in reality, I'm not sure. It's hard to wrap our minds around this God-sized vision for, for us where all humanity is one and living in peace. How can, how can I say that? Because just look around at our world. Look around at our own country. We are far from united. And I think in our hearts, we, we suffer from a very narrow understanding of who God is. And I don't believe we do this intentionally, but there are too many of us that, in which God is he, or God is white, or God is Methodist, or at least Protestant, that, that God is American. And I think there are even those who believe that in, in the corner of the throne room of God stands an American flag. But that's not to disrespect our flag, but but God is not beholding to a flag. He's not beholden to a nation or a race or a denomination. What we forget is that God is the creator of all. God is a God of all. God is the God of, of the Christians in Africa and those in Italy and those in Australia and those in South America. And he is the God of, of the Baptists down the street here and of the non-denominationals outside of town. And he is the God of every man, woman, and child who puts their faith in Jesus Christ. The God that we love, the God who is the Father of Jesus Christ, is also the God and Father of all people, of all ages, colors, nations, and genders. On World Communion Sunday, we celebrate our God and His big vision. Today, we are reminded of our connection with Christians around the world. And we should anticipate, we should be looking forward to joyously for that day when we are all gathered together as one. In his first letter to the Corinthians that we heard a little bit this morning of, the Apostle Paul explained that more than anything else, that the bread and the wine that we share in is, is symbolic of our unity in the body of Christ. For Paul, partaking in communion was a defining action of our, of our being the church. Sharing of the bread and cup embodies our relationship with Christ. And at the heart of Paul's message is that those who sit at this table, those who come to partake of this table, they are part of his family, the family of God. For Paul, for Paul, the Lord's Supper 
is not and should not ever be just considered another meal or just another reason for us to gather together. For Paul, communion is central to our faith. Now, I'm pretty sure I don't need to... to uh, I don't need to explain to this group of people how important our family meal times are. I remember uh, evening meals at my family. We sat down at the table after a long, hard day of work or a long day in school, and it was there that my parents found out what my brother and I were up to, how we were doing in school, how we were doing in sports. It was there that I, I learned how my dad's business was going. It was there around that table that we, we talked about the holidays and vacations, and we made those kind of plans. And Sundays, every Sunday after church, all my aunts and uncles and my cousins on my mom's side would get together at my grandmother's for spaghetti. Always spaghetti. Nothing else. Just always spaghetti. Now, how many of you have shared in meal times like that? How many of you still do? Okay, some. Yes, and, and yet despite our, our sentimental memories and experiences, we are you know, losing an appreciation for the importance of the family meal. Many of us long for more time to be able to sit down like that, and yet our lives are so hectic and so crazy, we're going one place to the other. And unfortunately... Unfortunately, or I'm sorry, <laughs> not unfortunately, we're just, we're running around. And in Paul's day, sharing a meal around the table was the way that you showed someone that, that you were a friend to them. It was a way of saying you accepted them and that they belonged. I mean, think about how the tax collectors felt in Jesus' day. Those people who were shunned and looked down upon, imagine how they felt when Jesus was willing to say, yeah, let's eat together. I accept you. You belong. Imagine how Zacchaeus felt when Jesus called him down out of that tree and said, Zacchaeus, go prepare a meal because tonight we're dining together. Zacchaeus felt welcomed. He felt like he belonged and that he had a friend. Fortunately, to a large extent, we've lost the social aspect of our communal lives, thinking that we're independent and that and if we're strong, we don't need anybody else. Forget sitting down at the same table. We hardly eat at the same time. You know, mom picks Lauren up from school and takes her to soccer practice and on the way picks up, runs through McDonald's and picks up a Happy Meal drops her off, and then stops at Subway and grabs a sub as she's heading for choir practice. Meanwhile, Dad's eating a bologna sandwich as he's taking Billy to Boy Scouts. And Billy, he's not eating anything because he already ate cereal and chips when he got home from school. We're just eating different places, different times. Studies have shown that kids who eat dinner together with their families do better in school they are less depressed, they're less likely to get involved with drugs and alcohol, and less likely to have eating disorders and have suicidal tendencies. And yet those same polls show that the time that we spend as families around the dinner table is decreasing by one-third. I know I noticed it when my kids started becoming teenagers and involved in everything. We did a lot more drive-through than we did sit-down. Now, if this is what has become of our family meal time, then I wonder, I wonder what it's done to our church meal time and the way that we, we view this meal, Holy Communion. Do we see it as, as a, an important, intimate time together with family? Or is it just drive-through? Even though Paul says the Lord's meal is central to our religious experience, I'm not sure that we all see it that way today. But we're not alone, because Paul saw it in the church of Corinth 2,000 years ago. 
he saw that Holy Communion didn't hold any greater significance to the new Christians than the sacrifices that their families made to the pagan idols. It was just another ritual, something else we went through the motions doing. We don't sacrifice to idols, but many Christians today, like the Corinthians, just go through the motions of receiving the bread and the cup without truly thinking about what it means. And Paul said, woe to you if you take this in this manner. Every month we gather at this table to share the bread and cup. But what does it mean to you? What does it mean to us? John Wesley taught that communion was a means of grace, a special way by which we experience God's presence in our lives. But how often when, when we come forward, do we pause at the altar or go back to our pew and just pause for a moment to think, what did I just do? And what does this really mean? And just really let that sink in. Do we really experience God's grace or do we just take this meal for granted like it's lunch any other day? Friends, God's grace is a precious blessing. Through grace, God is with us even when we're not aware of his presence. Jesus said, I am with you till the very end of the age. I will not leave you or abandon you. When we call out to God with humble, penitent hearts, God's grace is present and forgiveness is given. And he continues to help us become more and more like Christ. When we taste the bread and the juice, we are Sim symbolically taking in and receiving Christ as God's and His grace and His peace. It's a reminder of what Jesus did for us, and it's a reminder of, of the grace that is always with us and never leaves us. It's a reminder that of all that God is doing for us and continues to do. And this is, we don't deserve any of it, but that is grace. And I wonder, I wonder, when was the last time you experienced communion in this way? Do you ever walk away from this table feeling refreshed, restarted, renewed? Do you walk away feeling forgiven and strengthened and more alive? How do you feel when you walk away from this table? Have you experienced God's grace? Paul teaches us that because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body. For we all take a piece of that bread and we consume it. And now we are connected to one another. Monthly, weekly, and daily, Christians all over the world, they receive the sacraments of Holy Communion. Some use bread and others use crackers. Some use wine, others use juice. Some drink from the common cup and some they, they take the individual cup. Some of them, they sing a special song and others say special prayers. Some call it the sacrament, others the Eucharist, and others the love feast. The people coming to the table, they may be saint or sinner, young or old, male or female, white or brown, gay or straight, Republican or Democrat, or native-born or immigrant, but no matter... When we come to this table, we are all one in Christ Jesus. Our sharing of the communion bread is a special meal. Paul says it unites us to Jesus. And that is what World Communion Sunday is all about, reminding us of our collective oneness, our collective unity, something I believe that this country needs more now than ever, which is why, my friends, what we do this morning, how we how we approach and how we experience this meal today is so, so important. We must not just walk through the motions. We must be acutely aware of what we are doing and ponder, what does this mean? However, what we do at this table this morning and every time we come to it means nothing. It means nothing if we don't then take God's grace away from this table out into our community, and into the world. 
We know how easy it is to divide and to separate ourselves into us and them. But our dining at the Lord's table this morning calls us to a different way of living, a way that rises above the divisions and the disagreements and instead strives for peace in Christ, a way that reflects the very love of Jesus Christ. And so as you come to the table this morning in a few minutes to receive the bread and cup, a meal that we share with brothers and sisters around the world, I want you to think. I want you to pray. I want you to repent. I want you to, to give thanks. I want you to come ready to experience God's grace and allow that grace to, to wash away the feelings of otherness and division and let the grace of God unite you and unite all of us together with people around the world as the one body of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the day that you have blessed us with and for those who have gathered to share in your body and blood. Lord, we come as individuals, but when we partake together, we become one, one in you and one with, with Christians around the world. So we thank you for this blessing of grace. And may we, may we come to it with joy in our hearts. May we come and see the faces of our brothers and sisters. And may we, in our minds, see those who are receiving it in a different language with different means and know that we are one family. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. As you prepare your hearts to come and receive communion, let us proclaim what we believe. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Almighty God, Creator of heaven and earth. You have made from one every nation and people to live on all the face of the earth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. He commissioned us to be his witnesses to the ends of the earth and to make disciples of all nations. And today his family and all the world is joining at his holy table. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. 
This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. Renew our communion with your church throughout the world and strengthen it in every nation and among every people to witness faithfully in your name. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for calling us forth this day. We thank you for the bread and the cup which we partake in. And now that we have, may we truly be the one body of Christ for the world, that they may know that you have been sent and that you love them with a never-ending love. Lord, help us to go forth and be your light with grace and peace. Amen. And now we invite you to stand and join us as we sing our closing hymn, our, O Church of God United. Church. Sure. 
friends, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit go with you. Go forth as the body of Christ and lovingly serve one another. Amen. Amen. Thank you.